Hi, budget friends. Today I'm going to share with you a travel or vacation budget and checklist that I created. As we all know, it's sometimes very difficult to know how much you need to spend or save for traveling or a vacation. So I was thinking that I want to try and save up for a trip and have some sort of understanding of how much it's going to cost. So I didn't actually put in my real numbers. This is pretend numbers right now, but I wanted to share with you how I created this. The first thing that I did was I made this highlighted area to give a little bit of inspiration on where you're going. It's just text for the location that you are planning on going to. In this part of the dashboard, I also did a trip countdown. The trip countdown formula is just going to be this date. So the trip start date, which is manually entered, teen, and I press F4 to do dollar signs, which makes it so that this cell never gets moved. It stays fixed. And then minus today with the parentheses, and that'll give you today's date. So whenever you open and close this spreadsheet, it'll automatically update the countdown. I just put in a pretend date of November of next year, and that gives me the countdown of how many days I have left for the trip start date. This is nice to use for planning and to see how long you have to save for the trip. And then the trip end date um, is just another date, whatever it is that you plan. So I was saying, okay, let's say it's a week vacation. So I just did seven days for the trip start date and end date, but you can put in whatever it is that you plan. And then here is a formula that is just the end date minus the start date. Both are fixed you just type in F4 when you click on these cells so that they stay fixed. That gives you the countdown, the number of days. And then the number of nights usually is one less than the number of days. So usually on your last day, you typically will not have another night at a hotel. So it's the same formula as number of days. It's the end date minus the start date minus one. So that gives me the dates. If I change this and want to extend the vacation, now it's nine days and eight nights. And then here is just a idea of how many adults and children there plan to be. So for adults, I did just, this is 18 and over. So you can add in whatever numbers, children under 18, there might be some differences in pricing. If you have children under 18, but also children under two, sometimes there are travel plans, tours, events, and activities that might have children under two for free. I separated that out. And then seniors over 65, if there are any seniors traveling with you, I put in a box for that and then pets if there are pets. So that's just like a reminder that, you know, don't forget your pets if you're going to go traveling. And then here in this part of the dashboard, this is all the financial aspect of it. I created this table that has a checkbox that has a description. There's a pull down menu for a category. There's a budgeted amount actual amount, the difference between the budget and the actual, and then some notes. So the budgeted amount, so here I, it's just a number of how much you've saved. You type in that number and there's some conditional formatting. For this saved, it's a dollar amount formatted to be currency and I formatted it to be green. There is no additional formulas or conditional formatting. And then for the budgeted amount, I put in a sum formula. The sum formula is just equals sum and then open parentheses. And then I selected this entire column under the budget 
And I did close parentheses and hit enter. And that gives me an automatic for whatever budgeted amount, let's say I'm going to budget $400 for this, it's going to update because that's in this column. Then the actual is the same formula. It's the equal sum, open parentheses, and then it's this column for under actual. So as you purchase things and type in the amounts that you actually spent, that'll update that as well. And then for under budget or over budget, this is a formula for equal sum budgeted amount minus the actual amount is going to give me this amount here. So for this conditional formatting, if I'm $0 or over, it's going to be in green. And if I am under $0, it's going to show up in red. Let's say I spent $6,000 on something. I'm now over budget and it shows up in red. And you can see the text changed as well. So with the text, that's a if formula. So the if formula is equals ifs. And what I did was if this amount minus this amount is less than zero, then the text is going to say over budget. If this amount minus this amount is greater than zero, it's going to say under budget. And then the if formula continues, if this amount minus this amount equals zero, it's going to say on target. And then whatever text you want has to be in quotations. So this will change to over budget or under budget. So when I change this to 6,000, you can see it says over budget. Now, if I delete that, now it says under budget and the text is green when the cell value is greater or equal to zero it is going to show up in green it's just the text if the cell value is less than zero it's going to show up in red that's conditional formatting for this formula here i have an if formula and it is the same if this box here is less than zero, it's going to say remaining to save. Otherwise, it's going to say excess saved. So if I have $12,000 saved, now it says I have excess saved. If I put this back to 8,000, now it's telling me how much I have remaining to save. This cell box says, how much I've paid. So, so the formula is a equal sum with a open parentheses nested if formula, and then open parentheses if these cells here with the checkbox equals true. So if this checkbox is checked, then that formats these cells to be a true value. When they're unchecked, it's a false value. So if it's equal a true value, which means it's checked, then I want to sum this column here. Otherwise, I want it to be zero. And then close parentheses. When that happens, you get this dollar amount, which is adding everything up in this column here. As I uncheck boxes, this one is unchecked and it took out the amount that was paid. If this is checked and crossed off, then that means it's been paid for. For example, I put this amount in here. It doesn't change the paid until I check that off. I can put in like what I think the actual is going to be, but once I pay for it, then I can check it off and it goes into this cell right here. So adding these checkboxes is pretty easy. All you have to do is select the cells that you want to add the checkbox in, and then you go to insert. And if you have the current Excel version, then you should have this checkbox and you can just click checkbox and it'll 
enter them right into the cells for you. And you can see when I hover over them, they say false, but the ones that are checked, they say true. And then to have this conditional formatting where every time I check a box, the text is crossed out and grayed out, that's just a conditional format. So what you want to do is select the one of the rows. I usually do the first row before anything else is filled out. And then I go to conditional formatting, new rule. And then here at the bottom, it says use a formula to determine which cells to format. This is actually an updated version of this conditional formatting, which is great. So the formula is incredibly easy now. It just says format values where the formula is true. I click in here and I click in the cell where the checkbox is. And I want the I want the column to be fixed. So I want that dollar sign in front of the H, but I don't want the dollar sign in front of the eight. So I'm gonna hit my F4. So with that, then I go into format. I want my strike through and I want this gray color. And then I click okay and click okay. That will update the entire row. Now you don't have to do one by one, one, column at a time, which you used to have to do. And if I click the check mark, then it grays it out and crosses everything out. And once you do the one, if you don't have anything filled in on the table, then you can just drag the entire, um, you can hover over this until you get those crosshairs and you can just drag it down all the way through. But I'm not going to do that because I already have my conditional formatting. Or you can um, click each, the top of each column and double click your format painter and then just select everything below it to format everything. That's how that one works. Remaining to pay is just a simple formula of my saved amount minus my paid amount. And that gives you the remaining to pay. And then this section here is just a simple table. So I created these column headers and then I did insert and then table, it's already a table, so that's grayed out. And then I just started adding some different things that you might need to purchase or pay for. So if I uncheck everything, you can see what all of the descriptions are. These are made up, but they are some typical things that you might have to spend on a vacation, a B&B, &B, a hotel, under accommodation, aquarium. These are different activities, aquarium, park, show, spa, or tour. Then you have food, breakfast, dinner, drinks, lunch, snacks, fees, luggage, tips, and in travel insurance. There are some different things you might put under shopping category. So you might shop for clothing or souvenirs, duty-free, or I included pre-trip packing items. So sometimes you need to purchase little things like shampoos and conditioners in the little bottles, anything that you might need for pre-trip packing. And then for transportation, I've included car rental, gas and fuel, parking, rail tickets, ride share, like an Uber or Lyft or tolls and the airfare. Each one of these is going to go under a different category. This is a simple pull down menu that I created. In order to do this, you go into data, data validation, under list, you type in all of the different categories you want to include and separate them by a comma. Then you click OK and that'll show up in a pull down menu. The budget is generally a, a dollar amount that you put in. I formatted this to be currency because I like the way that the currency shows up. 
I didn't want the sense. So I just clicked this so that it would decrease the decimals. So I clicked it twice. It's just a whole number. The actual column and the difference column are also formatted the same way as the budget column as currency. And the notes column is just an extra location to have some additional notes. And then the last thing that I did was I just added these little kind of decorations. They're, um, they are icons. So if you click on insert icons and you go to illustrations, there are all these different visual images that you can insert. You just click on the one you want, click insert, and you usually have to scale it down quite a bit. Now I have some formatting in the spreadsheet. So it looked yellow in the window that we just had open, but when it comes into my spreadsheet, it comes in um, blue. So you can change these and do some formatting to them, but they are cute and they look nice. So I just scale them down and I move them over. Uh, you can also click on the graphics formatting and you can crop them. So this one is quite a bit too much uh, extra empty space. So if I just crop it down, then I can move it up and it fits a little bit better. So I'm just going to remove that. And I have my icons here on the top to make it look a little bit more fun. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. I would love to hear your comments and thanks again for watching. Bye.